Hi, Mr. Dodge. Pleasure to welcome you to our studio today. Good to be here. Uh, thank you for making the time. We just saw the U.S. Fed uh, hike their uh, key rate by three quarters of a basis point. Do you anticipate, although there is some variance in inflation rates right now between our country and theirs, do you anticipate at the end of October a, a similar decision from the Bank of Canada? Well, we, we already did our first 75 points here. Um, so the real issue that the bank is worried about is how far, how far do we need to move without over-moving and needing to move quickly? But yes, I think our bank has set the trajectory that there's going to be another increase um, that'll probably take us to four or four and a quarter, something like that, in the near term, and getting that up in the near term is important uh, because monetary policy takes time to have its effect on the economy. And so it was necessary to move quickly, not necessarily to move hugely beyond four or four and a quarter percent beyond that um, here. I think the situation in the United States is more difficult uh, in the sense, and they may have to do more than we do. So, so on that point, I was reading last week a paper from Desjardins which said that the bank will likely have to trigger a recession in order to fix, quote-unquote, or cure, quote-unquote, the, the problem that inflation poses right now. Do you think that's true? Well, the word recession is a uh, motivational word. Uh, I mean, my sense is that where we are headed, if this track that I just talked about, if that's what the bank does, is that we're probably going to have zero growth in from the fourth quarter of this year to the fourth quarter of next year. That may mean you've got a quarter uh, or even two where the growth is negative, but basically no growth over that period, a rise in unemployment, uh, perhaps by as much as 1% over that period. But at the same time, the bank will have signaled their seriousness about dealing with this so that I think expectations will not become unhinged as they were in the late 60s and early 70s as we were grappling with a similar problem of excess demand. So am I correct to interpret that if there is a recession or if that happens, it would be, very, it would be on the mild side from what yeah, you just said? I, I, my best sense is that there's not going to be any growth. Now, that doesn't feel great because we've come off a period, um, first half of this year, better than 3% growth at annual rate. So, but, but that's kind of the territory that I think we're reasonably in. But we don't know because we don't know what's go going to go on in the world, what external shocks are going to hit us uh, in, in the intervening period. There's also a, a political debate happening right now, and our viewers will have just listened to some of the back and forth that occurred in question period today about not just the monetary policy that's pursued to combat inflation, but what fiscal policy right. is pursued. So what the government does or, or doesn't do. Right. In particular, they announced some targeted measures recently uh, aimed at people who uh, have you know, middle to lower incomes, uh, and the uh, accusation from the opposition is that that in and of itself is inflationary. What is your assessment of that? What well, is? I mean, it, if, if you take what... The federal government has done and what the provinces have done, the $500 here, $500 there, um, the withdrawal of gas taxes. So this, this adds up. Uh, maybe there's $5 billion of, of, of federal uh, uh, effect. Probably you add up the pro provincial, it adds to more than that. Well, that's $10 billion uh, of additional demand um, that's being put into the economy, which is not, let me say, is not helpful uh, as the bank is trying to pull demand down uh, to get a better balance between our capacity to supply uh, in the short run uh, and, uh, and demand from households. So what's the best thing for governments to do? Because I, I sort, it sort of seems like they don't have a lot of runway because if they do stuff to help people who are genuinely really hurting because of the increasing cost of, li of living and how fast that increase is happening and has happened, it's, they, they could potentially add, add pressure to inflation. Uh, if they uh, don't do anything, they're, they're criticized for not helping people who are in need of help at this yeah. very moment. Like, what is the, the best, from your perspective, what is the best route for a government to take? Well, it's very difficult because the, the, there's a 
goal of income distribution, and there's a, a goal uh, of, of output growth, right? And, and there's a, a conflict there between, and so government is balancing that. I, I, my own view is the governments, our governments have probably done a bit too much, uh, but I say that with a degree of, of deference, a, a bit too much. I would say that by and large, in Canada, we've done it the right way. That is, we provided lump sum transfers rather than trying to cap the prices of things that are going up. So it's probably too much, but the structure of what uh, of providing essentially lump sum transfers to lower income people is probably the least damaging way to go about doing it. And then circling back to monetary policy, I know you're familiar with the political debate around that too. Uh, hindsight is always different than than in the moment, but but other central banks across the world have have kind of reflected on the fact that maybe they they did wait a little too long to start looking at interest rates and being more aggressive with them. Do you think that was the case here? Uh, yes, and I think for precisely the reason we were talking about earlier, that that our lesson reviewing the history of fiscal policy from 2010 to 2017-18 was that we were too tight. We Demand was too constrained at that point, and that's why we had problems. If we sort of all took that lesson uh, in 2021 and said we, we need to be careful, and I think uh, Paul Baudry in, in his recent speech illustrates that very well. It's a, it's a speech that's well worth people reading. And, and so uh, politically, then, what are the implications of that? What do, you, what do you think that we can draw from it? And uh, I think it's, it's difficult because the criticism has been so mm -hmm. far in, in, you know, so outspoken by the new leader of the party, for example, who used to say, doesn't say it anymore, but that the Bank of Canada governor should be fired. But then there are, you know, real concerns uh, uh, also being expressed about the pace at which uh, the bank ultimately acted. Yeah, so, so yes, in retrospect, now sitting almost at the end of 2022, it's clear that we didn't take into account enough both the government and the central bank, and that's, this is true almost universally uh, across the world, didn't take into account enough the fact that we are now living in a supply-constrained world. And indeed, we're, living, we're going to be living in a supply-constrained world, not as bad as it, as it was in, right, right in 2021, but... Uh, we're going to be living in a supply-constrained world over this decade. Probably we're going to need to invest something like 17% of GDP um, between private and government. And, and that means that there's going to be less of the rather slow-growing GDP that's going to be available for consumption. And our leaders, whether on the political side or the central bank, basically have to be clear that 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 is the case, so that people understand that it's not that they're being picked on or anything like that, but if indeed we're going to have a future out in the 20, uh, 2030s, we're going to have to do a lot more investment in this decade of the 2020s than we did in the decade of the 210s. And that means that it's difficult. It, it, it's going to make life more difficult and it means less rapid growth in consumption uh, than we might otherwise look for. And what does that mean in layman's terms? If I'm watching right now, what does that mean for Canadians at home, do you think, in the future? Don't expect your real incomes to rise very much. Really? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Dodge.